من ملابرم اوكي ام توداي اي هاف ا بريفليج تو بريزنت ام ا هوت توبيك ان بيدياتريك كاردولوجي which is the approach and or how to reach a diagnosis or to interpret the findings related to cyanotic congenital heart disease. Um, so I should... Uh, uh, so um, today I want to just uh, go through the cyanotic one. Maybe the second session I will try to uh, cover the um, they cover a cyanotic congenital heart disease. And uh, thank you for your host, uh, Kaka Meriwan, and your nice group, and hope everybody can get benefit. Um, so, yes. um, before everything, uh, we should know how to classify, that's in brief, in one slide, because my concentration on the cyanotic one today. Uh, maybe next uh, presentation will be on a cyanotic congenital heart disease. So we have two kinds of congenital heart defects, which are the acyanotic one, which there is no cyanosis, no blue discoloration. And by definition, you have no cyanosis. So either you have increased pulmonary blood flow, PBF mean pulmonary blood flow. So, so the blood flow to the pulmonary system is increasing. In that case, you have ASD, uh, and then you have VSD and PDA. So all three kinds of defects, they are acyanotic, but with increased pulmonary flow. Uh, or we may have combination of those uh, defects. Or you may have a normal blood, uh, blood flow to the pulmonary system, so in that case, you have either uh, uh, you have either uh, aortic or pulmonary stenosis. Stenosis means narrowing of that valve. So uh, we will discuss this issue next time. Uh, today, I'm I'm going to uh, concentrate on cyanotic congenital heart defects. Uh, so either we have uh, decreased flow to the pulmonary system. So all classification, this is called cl cl clinical classification, depending on the flow to the pulmonary system. So if the flow to the pulmonary system is, is little or decreased, in case of tetralogy of follow or pulmonary atresia, atresia mean absence. So there is no pulmonary artery. So that's pulmonary atresia. So these two will present with decreased flow and cyanotic presentation or you may have increased pulmonary flow. I will go through the in detail, don't you worry about it. Uh, this is just topics. So total anomalous pulmonary venous return or, or, or defect. So in that case, you have decreased flow. So decreasing flow in total anomalous, transposition of great arteries, truncus arteriosus, maybe, or increased flow. So tricuspid atresia. So uh, I will go in detail with it. Uh, then I'm starting with cyanotic one, in which what, what it mean by, by cyanosis? I mean, for all clinicians, they should be very aware of this finding. So it's a bluish or purple discoloration of the skin, of the skin and mucous membrane due to increased amount of dioxy, oxygenated hemoglobin. So, uh, uh, so the desaturated blood will be hemoglobin, will be increased. In that case, you will have blue discharge. If you look to this baby, you have blue lips, for sure tongue, and also the extremities. And in that case, you should have more than three grams of deoxygenated hemoglobin. Uh, um, this is very complicated. I will, I will go in detail with it. Um, uh, for example, a baby got hemoglobin of 14 or 15 or maybe 16. 
more, more, more younger, more hemoglobin. Uh, more adult, less hemoglobin. So for example, adult one is 12, around 12, 12 and a half, uh, but babies born, uh, it may be 14, 15, uh, and even more. And what's the definition? What's the definition of the uh, um, cyanosis on base on pulse oximetry test? Because as a nurse or as a physician, we are always depending on, on, on our eyes. So when your eye detecting a desaturation, mean or blueness, mean the saturation is below 85. So between 85 and 95, which is above 95 is normal. So between 85 and 95, it's, it's desaturated, but cannot be seen or may be seen by some expert, but not everybody. So you need pulse oximetry test in that case. So that's the trick here. Okay. Um, so uh, let's say if you have more than five gram, so you can see it very clearly. And uh, what's arterial hypoxia I mean the set is below 95, as I told you. And what are the potential causes of desaturation is either a low arterial oxygen saturation, so mean the arteries desaturated, or you have low cardiac output. For example, if you have a heart failure, if you had a heart failure and heart cannot pump blood, so in that case, blood does not go to the peripheries and the peripheries will be uh, desaturate because of the flow, not because it's the, the blood is desaturated already. So in that case, um, uh, they, be, they, they are blue, but really they are not. So in low cardiac output. Or venous stasis. Venous stasis means you have a blood congested, in, for example, in lower limb, uh, compressing that area and become uh, uh, desaturated. That, that should be local. Okay. If you look to this uh, um, graph and the pictures, if you, if, you, if you look to here, you may have peripheral cyanosis, which may be normal. Normal in kids, especially, especially in the newborn babies. So when the baby born, when the baby born, so there will be a, a cyanosis at the extremities and the lip. And that's normal, normal finding. But when the baby, when, when a baby uh, born with a tongue and mucosa of the mouth, uh, a, a blue, blue discoloration of that, uh, that part of the tongue and the uh, oral mucosa, that's not, uh, not normal. It's a central cyanosis. So it's possibly related to the heart, some kind of shunt inside the heart. Okay, so that's the cause of cyanosis here. Then uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going detail with this. If you look to this uh, graph, it's very, it's very, very interesting. Why? Because if you have a patient with cyanosis, with blue discoloration, and you are as a nurse, looking to that patient, lip and, and fingers, in case of anemia, we should be very, be aware of that point. In case of anemia, you need more desaturated blood to be obvious on your patient. So what I mean by that, cyanosis doesn't appear in anemic patient in comparing to normal people. That's very important. So more anemia, so the patient need more percent of desaturated blood to be obviously cyanotic. It should be very clear. So, but when you have a patient with polycythemia, uh, if you look, for example, I'm just giving an example. If you look to adult patient with smoking, they look like they got cyanosis, but actually they have not. So how you, how you predict that by polycythemia, because they, are, they have polycythemia and polycythemia causing, uh, so they need, less desaturated blood. It's like a 13% of whole blood 
should be desaturated when you have polycythemia. But in case of anemia, you need at least 38% of blood to be desaturated, then they will be obviously a cyanotic. So this is cyanotic when you have 40% of the blood desaturated, but this one, no. They, they just need 13% of the blood to be desaturated, and obviously they are blue. So be aware of that. As a nurse, you should be very aware of hemoglobin of your patient. If, you, if the hemoglobin is low, if the hemoglobin is low, so you should be very aware of desaturation. Your patient may be desaturated and you are not, not seeing that, that observation. And your patient may die because of that. So, um, let's hide this. So what are the physiology behind cyanosis? I'm going to detail with it. Uh, so first of all, um, I'm talking about venous saturation, which is pulmonary venous. What's, what's, what are the pulmonary veins? These are four. One, two, three, four. So all four coming back to the LA, left atrium. This is left atrium. This is left ventricle. That's right atrium and right ventricle. So all the pulmonary vein, which is denoted as a red color, which is mean that saturated blood, goes back to the left atrium. All are saturated blood. But if your patient got some kind of problem, apart from the heart, so maybe it's uh, not, I mean, the blood is not saturated well. So in that case, it's not a congenital defect. It's a pulmonary one, pulmonary cause of cyanosis, which may happen in pulmonary edema, respiratory distress syndrome in babies, severe pneumonia, atelectasis, and lung collapse. All those and other findings also. We have a lot of causes for pulmonary problems causing desaturation. So uh, that's, uh, this is, will be the cause, but the cause will be related to pulmonary. As a nurse, you should be aware of this because pulmonary cyanosis, pulmonary causes of cyanosis, is different from cardiac cyanosis. So how to differentiate? I will go to, I, I will go through it very clearly. Um, so if I'm, uh, uh, if I'm furthermore going to detail with desaturation in case of cyanotic or cyanotic congenital heart disease. So if, if you look to these two pictures, what happened with these two pictures? Here, we have a shunt, and the shunt is from which side? From the blue side to the red side. Mean the desaturated blood goes to the which side? The left side, which it pump blood, which, which is saturated here is nicely, it's a pink color, but here is very dark one. So mean that blue one mix with the pink one and then go to the circulation. So your patient now got such uh, desaturated blood. Uh, and uh, uh, and also in the uh, if you look to the interatrial septum here, there is a right to left shunt, which it means that uh, um, uh, uh, the the blood, the desaturated blood, goes to the left side of the heart and it mixes with the left side and then uh, pumped to the circulation. Okay. In case of uh, right to left shunting example for it is a tetralogy of follow. Tetralogy of follow. What it means, tetralogy of follow? Mean the RV is thick. You see how the RV is thick? That yellow part is donating, donating by the thickness. Then narrow RVOT. So you see how the pulmonary artery is smaller than the left side. Then what happens? Because here is narrow. So the blood from here goes to the left side of the heart. It mixes with the left and goes to the systemic circulation, so it becomes desaturated. And for sure, there is a VSD here, and the aorta here is overriding the septum. So that's the, that, that pathology is called tetralogy of follow. Tetralogy of follow means four findings. Okay. 
In other case, when you have severe pulmonary stenosis, severe pulmonary stenosis, when you have severe pulmonary stenosis, uh, uh, in that case, um, more narrow, narrow RVOT, but here we have no VST. In that case, the blood goes back to the RA and then back to the LA through the anteratrial septum and do, doing the saturation. So in cases when you have a baby born or baby presented with severe pulmonary stenosis, you will have cyanosis, not by the VSD, by the ASD, okay? Then we have another possibility, which is a mix, a complex one, complex uh, 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 problem with the ventricles, which is trichospatrasia. Tricuspid valve here, with, there is a tricuspid valve here, you see? It's narrowed, it's, it's thickened, it's none. So here just we have mitral valve, but the tricuspid valve is not here. So we have a right atrium, we have a right atrium, we have a left atrium, we have left ventricle, but RV, right ventricle, is very small with a VSD, and the pulmonary artery comes off that small part and there is no tricuspid valve. So in that case, in that case, because of RVOT is obstructed by this narrow chamber, so there will be narrowing of the uh, uh, RVOT. So by this case, it looks like a tetralogy of Fallu. When the blood, desaturated one, mixed with LA, which is saturated one, then the mixing happened here, and you see how the blue and, uh, and the pink color uh, blood goes through the aorta and giving blood to all the body. That's the case in mixing a mixed type complex uh, congenital heart disease. Um, if I am more deeply uh, talking about this subject, if you, if you look to truncus arteriosus, this is a kind of called truncus arteriosus. So what happened with truncus arteriosus? You have a, a two arteries, which is pulmonary artery and aorta, Mixy, so they are just one valve, one valve with one outlet, with one outlet, then the branch, it branch after that to pulmonary artery and aorta. So at first, it's just one valve, one artery. Then it just split to the pulmonary artery, which is usual, and the aorta, which is usual for adult also. So in that case, so if I'm just, uh, I don't know, it's uh, clear here. So if you look here, you have the common uh, valve, which is the pulmonary artery and aorta. So they are just, have, they have just one valve with the VSD, big VSD here. So the LV and RV mixed. So in that case, you have single artery with one valve and the VSD. But if you, if you go more farther detail with this pathology, we have three kinds of it. But <clears throat> this, the pathology here, behind here, is the same. But what, what's different between the types is the pulmonary artery, how it's branchy. You see, in the, branch, the branch is different here, it's different here and here. But that's the common one. This is the common one, okay? Uh, this is very important pathology. Uh, always we are facing it here, and me, probably you too in your practice. What happens here? You have, uh, if you look very carefully, this is an LA. Yes. Any question? Yes. Uh, there's somebody raising hand. I don't know. Any question? Uh, Doctor? Yeah. بس بس احمد حزك ما بلهم دواي تشل دقال اي فكدا اخري دتوان لقر رقي هما لينكوا داخل بنوا بلا يكي كان سؤالي هبو كاكا عادل ناو ونيا فرموا سؤال كاكا عادل
یا حزکی سوال که بنو سب و آخر داینه اگر بکره. اوکی دکتر هر کس پسری هم بوده پسر که آنو سه دوای لکوتال ای وکه پسر که پسرش کن. If you look here, this is very important pathology. If you if you look here, you see the pulmonary artery comes off the LV. Usually, aorta comes from the LV, right? So if you if you look here, uh, that's the aorta, that's the aorta, which should be comes from here, but it comes out from RV. So it's a transposed one, transposed. So mean it's uh, it's not in its normal position. So the aorta come from RV, pulmonary artery from the LV. And what helped this patient to live, because there's two separate circulation, one all saturated and one all desaturated. So what happens, there should be a mixing. So the mixing either at the PDA level or the uh, PF or ASD level. So that's very important. If my patient is not going to do some kind of intervention, this patient will be died immediately. There is a kind of anomalous, uh, as at first I told you about, that's a total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Total anomalous pulmonary, total mean all, pulmonary vein wrongly going to the right side of the heart. That's the meaning of this. We have four types of it, you see? We have four types of it. So we have on one, it's called supracardiac. One is, uh, one is called, called infracardiac. One is called is uh, intracardiac, and one is called uh, that's a sinus, and this is infracardiac one. So we we have so many types, four types, but the main issue with this pathology is all the pulmonary veins going back to the RA instead to go into where to the left side of the heart. That's a problem with this pathology. Okay. So. Yes, uh, they are going in and back. So, so how to, so when you are, you are facing a patient with cyanosis and you are missed here. So what, how to do, how to determine it, how to evaluate it. So, um, in case we have, <coughs> we have desaturated pulmonary vein, mean it's a, Pulmonary, <clears throat> pulmonary problem. But in sometimes it's a other causes that we already talk about. So how to differentiate these two kind of problems? Uh, let's uh, annotate. Okay. So here, uh, either you have a pulmonary problem or either you have a mixing problem. So in that case, uh, so you should determine systemic blood flow. So take the pulse, the uh, perfusion, uh, the blood pressure, all these uh, things very important to know the blood goes to the systemic uh, peripheral circulation or not. That's one point. As a nurse, you should know this. Then you send for hemoglobin. What's ab what about your hemoglobin? Is it low? As I told you, if low, <coughs> they become desaturated, but, but what happens, what happens is the patient is desaturated, but you are not aware of this saturation. So in that case, you should be very aware. Then what else is a total body oxygen consumption? Is your patient distressed? Is your patient exercised? Is your patient at rest? Because each condition got a VO, VOT, VO2 uh, different, uh, in different levels. Okay. Then, now, now you, you classify your patient. Is my patient is got in cyanosis with happy tachypnea? What do I mean by happy tachypnea? There is tachypnea without dyspnea. So they are breathing fast, but easily. So they are, uh, they are saying, uh, uh, so they are doing a lot of uh, breathing, 
but with ease, with easy way. So in that case, it's a problem with the heart. So there is a kind of problem with the heart in which the lung is compliant, but the heart is problematic. But in case of lung pathology, your patient become tachypneic and dyspneic, both. So they are breathing fast and not easy. They are in distress. So that's not, they are not happy. So I'm just, uh, I should go back. Yes. So, so if I am, uh, if I am going to, to more, uh, uh, more allocate my patient to see how, what's going on with my patient. When my patient is happily tachypneic, I mean, there is no dyspnea, but tachypnea only. Uh, so my patient may got total anomalous pulmonary inference there. And as I told you, all the veins going to the right side of the heart and the X-ray looks like it's called a snowman. Snowman, Rajluthalji. It's a snowman. So here is a bulb and here is a bulb. So it looks like a snowman. That's finding fixed with the total anomalous pulmonary venous system. Then, as a nurse, what you are doing, you are putting a pulse oximetry here in the, uh, in the right hand and another pulse oximetry in the lower leg. And you compare both. If you look here, uh, here, the sat, the sat in upper part of the body is 99, if you look to the picture, the upper, upper one. But here, the sat is 75. So, so when, when you have a, you see, here is 75, but the upper part is 95 or 97. So there is difference between the, you see, it's blue, but here it's red. So there is difference. So the difference is that the upper part of the body is saturated and the lower part of the body is desaturated. This is called what? Differential cyanosis. Differential cyanosis. So mean the upper part of the body is saturated and the lower part of the body is desaturated. So in that case, what happens? What happened with your patient? So there is a shunting of venous blood into descending aorta through what? PDA. And it happened with primary pulmonary hypertension. So your patient from here, from the PDA, the blood goes down from pulmonary artery, which is desaturated. And the blood from aorta, which that red one or pink one, go into the upper part of the body and they become saturated or more saturated. So there will be differential cyanosis. And sometimes in case of ASD, PDA due to pulmonary vascularism being a high, uh, this is an explanation why your patient got cyanosis. Uh, if I'm going more detail with a differential cyanosis, we have two kinds of differential cyanosis. We have differential cyanosis in case of interrupted aortic arch, when the arch is just cut it here, there is no arch or nothing here. So in that case, what happens? So the lower part of the body is uh, blood, uh, supply with the PDA blood and the upper part with the ascending aorta. But with the reverse cyanosis, when you have reverse cyanosis, so your patient, your patient your patient is giving blood, give, giving blood uh, through the PDA to the descending aorta uh, from the DTGA case when you have a, 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 a kind of desaturation going to the, that part and saturation going to the other part. Okay. Um, now, now, when you finish with the saturation of your patient, uh, Kaka Mariwan, is the, the time left for us for the uh, presentation or we should continue?
بلا دكتور بلا كداخل تتوين درجه ها مان لينك داخل بينا اوكي اوكي سو ام ذير ار سم ريد ريد فلاجز اولسو ان كونجينيتال هارت ديزيز يو شود نو ذا اريا اوف ذا ميمبرز ذن يو برينك يور ستيثوسكوب اند اوسكالتيت ان ذيس ارياس ذاتس كولد مايترال اريا ذاتس ذا تشيست ويتش ذا ليفت لور ليفت ليفت بارت اوف ذا تشيست ذن ذا لور ليفت ذاتس ستيرنم So lower, lower left sternal border. This is upper left sternal border. That's right sternal border. And these are the carotid areas. So all these areas should be auscultated. And any murmur, grade three and four, or louder more, I mean, you should regard seriously. Or maybe you have a continuous, continuous, like in this way. So it go in the in the back especially when you examine the back in case of tetralogy of following and pulmonary atresia or you may have a pansystolic murmur and lower left sternal border here here so pansystolic murmur here or you may have to and fro murmur to and fro like it comes uh, go and comes back so in that kind of murmur It's in the <coughs> lower or the left upper sternal border here. So in that case, when you have absent pulmonary valve. Okay, this is very important test. I mean, every, every nurse, every physician should know about this. Why? Because you can, by this test, then after this, you uh, prone your patient to oxygen. Uh, usually, when you are facing a cyanotic kid, then you start to put a nasal uh, a cannula for oxygenation. And so in this case, uh, how to differentiate uh, pulmonary from, from the cardiac cause of cyanosis? So you give, you administer 100% oxygen, 100% oxygen. And what happens? If, if lung pathology, there will be the PaO2 by, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a IBG or arterial blood oxygen uh, test. So uh, will be increased. So if you look here, so in normal people, what happens, the, when you are giving 100% oxygen, so your patient uh, uh, PaO2 in the IBG will be more than 300. But you, if your patient, Uh, PAO2 between 150 to 300, so probably this is a pulmonary or CNS or metabolic or uh, hemoglo hemoglobin or methemoglobinemia or abnormal hemoglobin. So that's the case with the PAO2 in 100% response. But when you are giving 100%, but your patient still between 100 and 150, so your patient probably, probably primary pulmonary hypertension. It's related to lung and the heart. But when the SAT below, I mean the P, PAO2, PAO2 below 100, so that's for sure your patient going congenital heart defect. So by this test, you can differentiate. You can differentiate between congenital heart defect and congenital heart defect and lung pathology. So that's very important. A very important test to be done for patients. Then what to do next is uh, 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 doing ch chest x-ray. Uh, for example, as I told you, when uh, um, you have a chest x-ray like snowman, you may suspect total anomalous pulmonary venous return, but you may have even with low SAT a normal chest x-ray. And sometimes you do uh, echo or electrocardiogram which is an ECG, and by the ECG, if your patient, usually your patient got nothing, very significant one, but if you have left axis deviation, most probably your patient trichospetrasia, or maybe a right axis deviation, it's trial to follow ASD, PS, and a total anomalous pulmonary venous arterial. So you may have so many differential diagnoses in that case, and maybe your patient normal with right axis deviation, So, so take care of that. If you look to this ECG, that's the lead one, and this is lead three. So if both left in you, so that's a left axis deviation, 
and if they are facing you, that's the right access deviation. Uh, I can I can give session about the uh, ECG because uh, it's uh, it's very detailed. It's very detailed. Okay. Next uh, next stage is to do chest X-ray. So when you are dealing with your patient, you may face your patient as a dextrocardia. You see how the heart is uh, is facing to that side. The heart should be here, but it faces to the other side. That's a dextrocardia or your patient got right arch, right arch aorta or boot-shaped heart. You see, it's a, like a boot, like a boot. See, the pulmonary artery is not here, and the tip of the heart is facing up. Usually, the heart is facing here, but this heart is facing up, and there is no pulmonary artery and right arch. So this is a case of tetralogy follow. This is a case of tetralogy follow. That case is the dextrocardia when the heart is in that side. This is different like a boot shape. If you go more detail with the lung, so for the x-ray, you should look to the chest field or lung field. If the lung is clear like this, it's very clear. So most probably you have the low flow. So all these causes are low flow. Epstein, tricuspid atresia, pulmonary atresia, intact ventricular septum, PS, pulmonary stenosis, tetralogy of follow, tetralogy of follow, pulmonary atresia, all these are decreased. Total anomalous is no, it's a, like a snowman, so they will have more flow. For example, like here, you see, the lung is not clear here, it's pulmonary pul edemic, and here the heart is big, so big. So in both conditions, what you have, when you have total total anomalous pulmonary venous return or transposition of great arteries, you may have increased or normal pulmonary flow. So maybe they present like this, like that. And the others, they present with the previous one, like this one. The, the lung is oligemic. It's uh, black. But here, it's not black. It's, uh, it's like a whitish. And the heart is big. So that's the difference. Then next step is what to do? Doing echocardiography. I'm doing echo for a patient and then try to diagnose my patient. That's, a, that's uh, the pulmonary, one of the results is small. And it's a detailed uh, examination. Um, if you like, I have a session also on that. Then uh, it's, there is a very important pathology in cyanotic congenital heart disease are the followings, which they are rare, but they are very critical. So when you are facing a baby, a small baby with a, a RVO2 obstruction, but they are PDA dependent. So all the flow in their heart depending on the PDA. So how they, how they present to you, uh, they will present with severe cyanosis. So like critical pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary atresia, like this. You have no pulmonary artery. Or to charge your follow with pulmonary stenosis, severe pulmonary stenosis, or maybe single ventricle with severe PS and pulmonary atresia, or maybe hypoplastic left heart syndrome when the left side is none or not present, or Epstein malformation like this. This is Epstein where the tricuspid valve is lower than the mitral valve. This is a mitral valve in the left side of the heart, and this is the right side of the heart. So, in the street tricuspid valve to be here, it's, it's down to here. So what it means, it means that the RV becomes small and then the, there will be very big RA with the right to left shunting and cyanosis. This is very important for you. I'm going to manage my patient. Now my patient is cyanotic. You approach your patient, you conclude that your patient like, uh, the diagnosis of your patient is like this, then what you do next? You admit your patient in the ICU and then optimizing hematocrit. Please, I told you, you should optimize your hematocrit, hemoglobin. So, so uh, often we want to be between these two in single ventricle kit. An older patient that's chronically hypoxic tend to be more polycythemic, maybe more than 45 to 55, even 60. And you give, uh, you give, you support the circulation because you need to 
you, you need to support circulation by volume and inotrope, inotrope like dopamine, dopamine, dobutamine, mirinone, and et cetera, and norepinephrine, and et cetera. So you need to make the systemic circulation high pressurized, pre become normally pressured. So, and then optimizing your ventilation by adequate pH and pulmonary vascular uh, uh, resist resistance control. Because if you give uh, uh, some kind of vasodilator, you may help your patient. Um, uh, I mean, pulmonary vasodilator. Or, and minimizing VO2. VO2, how you minimize VO2? By decreasing activity. So you, you may need to paralyze your patient or put in on mechanical ventilation, or you may sedate your patient, or you may control in temperature uh, by decreasing metabolic and decreasing saturation. Then they're reducing or eliminating acidosis and become a, a new control, the glucose and calcium. Then in some cases, you may need to do some kind of intervention as we are doing here. So in case of transposition of great arteries, because there is, you need to uh, make a hole, uh, 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 we are doing it by making a hole by this kind of balloon and we rupture this area. So we make, we make bo more blood to make it and we keep the patient alive. And thank you for your time and attention. And now the panel uh, open for discussion. If any question, I'm ready to answer. Uh, I will. Any questions? Somebody there was a racing of hand, but I don't know, disappears. I will unmute all. So you can unmute yourself and if you have any question, please do not hesitate to uh, <laughs> yes, who's chatting? Um, yes, there's no question in the chat also. Uh, uh, if you are not understanding any slide, I can go through if you, if you like. But uh, I did it in the pictures to make it clear for you. Um, uh, as, as you know, pictures will be fixed in mind and more understandable. And you will have the video uh, record later on. You can review it. And anytime, any question, I, I already I put uh, my email, university email, and you can, uh, you can, you can ask questions through the email about any, any, any issues related. Um, Kakam everyone, probably there is no Bala questions. Shaykh. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you thank for you everybody. For Yes. Uh, thank you everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank